on your verse, I mean on your Bible, on verse 7, this is what it says. The man who traveled with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. So, ano sabi? Seeing no one daw. That's verse 7. Let's look at verse 17. According, this is the testimony of Ananias. Remember, pinapunta ni ng Panginoon si Paul kay Ananias. Ananias later departed and entered the house and after laying his hand on Saul, this is what he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road. So, sino daw ang nag-appear kay, kay, kay Paul? Sabi, according to, to Ananias, it was the Lord Jesus who appeared unto you. Right? That is according to Ananias' testimony. And look at the testimony of Paul on, on, on verse 27. Barnabas took hold of him, brought him to the apostle, kasi inimbitahan ng uh, the, 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 uh, Barnabas invited Paul to join with the disciples or to join with the apostles. And this is how he described them. Uh, on chapter 22 and verse 14, uh, I'm just going to read it to you. He said, The God of our Father has appointed you to know His will and to see the righteous, uh, the righteous one and to hear and utter the utterance from His mouth. Ano sabi doon? To see the righteous one. So that is a big proof that, uh, that, uh, that Paul basically see the literal Jesus Christ during his encounter into the road to Damascus. Because there are a lot of skeptic people. There are a lot of skeptic people doesn't believe that Paul sees the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, some people are saying, oh, nag-alusin it. He's just only hallucinated. No. But on the testimony of Ananias and the testimony of Barnabas and the testimony of Paul himself, he said, the Lord is Okay? So, we're just simply trying to strengthen our belief, our understanding. And uh, what does it mean? Why is it important for us to understand? The Lord appeared, it means that the Lord appeared to him on the, on the road. We might say, well, what does that mean? We can say beyond, we cannot, say, we cannot go beyond what the scripture said. He saw the Lord. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 8, and this is what he, uh, and when he talks about the appearance of Christ. Uh, remember, it was Paul who wrote 1 Corinthians, and this is what he said on 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 15, verse 8. And least of all, he, he appeared to me. Sino daw? Sino? Ano siya sabi ni Paul? He appeared to me. He appeared to me in the least of all. He saw the glorified Christ. He saw the transcendent Christ coming out of the, of the middle of this blazing, shining light. I think this is the sequence to what Stephen encountered. Remember the glorious Stephen when he was being stoned into death? The heaven opened and he saw the Lord Jesus Christ opening. And I guess, or I would like to believe, this is the same picture that Paul sees about the Lord Jesus Christ in the road to the master. He saw the Lord Jesus Christ. Same experience. Stephen, nung pinapatay na siya, si Paul, nung pinapatay na yung, yung kanyang spiritual life when he is being beaten up. Stephen saw the heaven open and saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And we remember that on chapter 7. Remember we, we discussed that a while ago. He saw the Lord Jesus Christ next to God in heaven. So stood by, so stood by and saw, and uh, he saw Stephen, saw the glorified Christ. And at this point, Paul himself see the glorified Christ. You know, at that very moment, no, no, when, when he see that, that light appears to him into the road to Damascus, he see the glorified Christ himself. The heavens are open once more, and this murderous man named Saul is to gaze into the blazing glory of that same person which Stephen saw. Nakita niya rin. Kayo ba? Gusto niyo makita yun? Ako gusto ko. I hope every one of us want to see that, you know, that glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and look at this. Look at this. It, it, I was so amazed when, you know, suddenly I realized 
Nung pinapatay na, when, when Paul is being murdered, when Paul is being stoned into death, remember his prayer? Ano sabi ni Stephen sa prayer niya? Lord, sabi niya ganun, remember not this sin against them. This is the time the Lord is answering Stephen's prayer. He is now going to forgive the sin of Saul and answer the prayer of Stephen at this very moment. Ang sabi ni Stephen, Lord, wag mo silang, uh, don't, don't remember this sin against them. And this time, the Lord will start to forget the sin of Paul. And it's amazing thing, Stephen's prayer is answered. And the Lord is about to forgive the one who led the execution and answered Stephen's prayer. Diba? Napaka, I, I cannot imagine it. Na y- yung, y- the Lord would answer the prayer of Stephen to that exact same person who gave approval for the execution of his life. Diba? And that is a divine contact. Kaya questioning ba natin yung divine contact na yun? No. That is a divine contact. Let's go now to the divine conviction. So, so, why are you persecuting me? Uh, let's read the, the, the succeeding verse. Kanina, verse 1 and 2, verse 3, uh, up to verse, uh, yeah, verse 3. And now let's go to verse 4. And this is what happened. And falling to the ground, si Saul, bumagsak sa ground, he heard a voice saying to him, So, so, why are you persecuting me? And again, on, ver- on, on chapter 22, the same thing, he explained lang ni Paul to his testimony. And also on, the, on, 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 on chapter 22, he's defending himself among, uh, among the Pharisees and among the, 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 the high priests. Uh, on chapter 26, he is defending himself among uh, uh, the Roman, ano, the Roman ano, emperor. Okay, uh, if, if you're going to read. So, he's defending Paul himself in those two occasions. So, where are we? On verse 4, he says, uh, He fell on the ground and heard the voice saying to him, So, so, why are you persecuting me? You know, at this point, he doesn't know what hit him, obviously. Diba? He is laying at his feet of, on his of his conqueror. He is at the right position, we might say, for his conversion. You know, and na siya. That is the right place for his conversion. At the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember in John 15, 25, Jesus said, they hated me without any cause. So probably this is the same question he was asking Paul. Sabi ganon, why are you doing this? Why are you persecuting me? And remember when, uh, I, I guess everyone knows, in the Old Testament, when they say, soul, soul, diba? sometimes, uh, here, uh, 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 most of the time, in ulit ulit, you work, they are always doubling the word, the word, yeah. soul, soul, ano ba yung mga example nun? Uh, sorry? Verily, verily. Yung mga, yung mga ganong statement, basically, it gives emphasis, just to give emphasis. Same thing here, soul, soul. Pwede naman sabihin na soul, di ba? Pero bakit niya kailangan sabihin soul, soul? Because he wants to give emphasis. And what, what is the emphasis here? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Why are you persecuting me? Okay, this is a thrilling statement from the Lord. Why are you persecuting me? But let, you know what? Let, uh, let's go for a while. Wait a minute. At that time, when, when, when Paul is persecuting the Christian, the Lord Jesus Christ is already in heaven. Right? Wala nang pangyon, nag-ascend na siya sa heaven. He was already in, in heaven. So, Lord, what, what, what do you mean? Why are you persecuting me? Paul is not persecuting you. He is persecuting the Christian. So what does it mean? This is what it means. Why are you persecuting me? I mean, what does... What does this actually mean is that we are inseparable and we are identified, tied up with the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord identifies for us this very significant reality 
that to persecute any of his people is to persecute him. That he is inseparable from his people. He is bound together with all the members of his body so that every stroke which is directed against us is a blow that falls on him. He is truly identified with us. Persecuting us is persecuting him. And that is what it means. So when we persecute our brothers and our sisters, we are persecuting the Lord Jesus Christ himself. When we are doing something wrong with our brother and our sister, as if that we are hurting the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And this is what the Lord is saying. Paul, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting my body, my church? You know, Saul was delivering blows to the Lord Jesus Christ, but later on in his life, he would gladly say, remember, after so many years when he became Christian, this is an excerpt from Paul's statement. Sabi niya, I am accepting now the blows that were meant for him. I bear in my body the marks of Christ. Dati siya yung sumusuntok sa Panginoon. Before, he is the one trying to persecute the Lord Jesus Christ. But later on, when he became a Christian, he said, I would like to take that, you know, that blow and put that as a mark of Christ in my body. So learned that great truth that as, as he soon taught and lived that every member of the body of Christ is a member of Christ and is one with Christ, the glorious head of the body. And if one believer is touched on earth, that touch is felt in heaven. That's how we are being identified with him. And truly, he bears our grief and carries our sorrow. So was persecuting Jesus when he is persecuting his people. And I hope this is the kind of feeling that we are feeling. Now, whatever we do on, on, on earth, it is bound on heaven too. When we are doing persecution for his body, the church, the people, to our brothers and sisters, we are, we are doing it for the Lord. And look at this. This is an important thing, you know. Uh, this is the real issue. It, basically, Paul was hit with the real issue. And this is something that we got to understand. When God initiates salvation, remember, it was the Lord Jesus Christ who initiated salvation, right? Siya yung nagpakita sa ke, He was the one who showed himself to, to Paul, right? Siya yung nagpakita. When God initiates salvation, he immediately needs to go to the real issue. And the real issue stated here is, you are persecuting me. Why? Ganun yung conviction ng Lord. Ganun niya kinoconvict. Ganun niya kinoconsensya si Paul. Kino, persecute mo ako eh. Bakit? Yun ang gusto sabihin ng Lord. You are persecuting me. Why? Why are you persecuting me? And this, and this issue of conviction is essential. Why are we treating Jesus the way you are treat, uh, the way we are treating Him? And that is the real issue. Basically, yun, yun, yung, yun yung conviction eh, na as if the Lord is questioning, why are you treating me this way? There are a lot of sins in the world. Do you believe me? Maraming kasalanan sa buong mundo. But the sin that is most important to realize is the knowledge of sin of rejecting Jesus Christ. The issue of conviction is not that a man is a liar, that not man or a woman is cruel or unkind or deceptive or whatever else or immoral. The crime for which people are damned to hell is because of the rejection of knowing Jesus Christ. Pwede kang magkamali ngayon eh. Pwede kang gumawa na, you know, pwede kang magmura, pwede kang magkamali, pwede kang maglay. But it is not comparable to the sin of rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what Paul is doing. He is rejecting all the while, all through his life going back, he is rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is why the Lord Jesus Christ is asking me, you're persecuting me. Why? Anong ginawa ko sa'yo? What? How I love to you? And the Lord is already starting to work on his heart. You know, why are you rejecting me? 
May natanong ng Panginoon sa kanya, why are you... And, and, and this is the kind of question that I would like us to ask all the people around. Why are you rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you, you could, you, I know you are not perfect. There are many sins that you can commit. But that one, one, one thing, don't reject it. Because that's the only thing that could save you from all your sins. You know, the work of the Holy Spirit, as mentioned in John chapter 16, he said, uh, uh, our Lord said, is to convict the world of sin because they believe Him not. Diba? Yun ang work done ng Holy Spirit to convict the world of their sin. sin. What kind of sin? The sin of not believing Him. That is the crime of all crimes. That is unpardonable sin, an unforgivable crime. And so is literally smashed with this indictment you are persecuting the Son of God. That's a conviction that has to reside in his heart. So that's the divine conviction. Now let's go now to the conversion, the divine conversion. Ano sabi ni Paul? Who are you, Lord? Okay, chapter 9, chapter 22, chapter 26. And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Pero pagdating sa chapter 22, may additional, sabi na, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. On chapter 26, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. So, they are all the same because it came from the same person. Pero what, what is happening here? He's not even sure who he's looking at. He never seen Jesus before, but even if he's seen the Lord Jesus Christ at this point, this was not going to be the same Jesus because... Jesus at this time is not, uh, was not the same in his glorified form. Uh, but he quickly finds out that he has been indicted for persecuting Jesus 